Hey, welcome to the shop. I have a fun video for you here today. We're gonna to do a little bit of TIG welding with a stick welder. Now, one of the most common questions I've been asked in comments is, can you set up a little stick welder like this to TIG weld? And the answer is yes, especially if you have a stick welder that outputs direct current or DC like these little inverters do. If you have a buzz box that outputs only alternating current or AC, I wouldn't necessarily recommend TIG welding with that. But let's talk about some of the differences between a dedicated TIG welder and a uh, stick welder here. Because the heart of them, or the power supply, is very similar because it outputs what's called constant current. And that means that it will attempt to maintain the same flow of electrons, the same current, uh, by varying the voltage um, on the output. In order to run a uh, stick welder as a TIG welder, there are a couple of details on a TIG welder that need to be addressed in the setup. Now the first one of those is the flow of shielding gas. Because you don't have the flux coating like you have on the outside of a stick electrode, you need to have argon gas flowing out of your TIG torch to shield the molten metal from the oxygen in the air. And so in a typical TIG welder, you'll have an electronically actuated valve that will open to start that flow of gas for you and close to stop it. Now instead of that, I have a torch here that has a valve that's manually operated, and I'll link in the description below a torch similar to this that will connect right to a machine like this a little Deco Pro welder. Um, but uh, you just twist this to open it, and that starts the flow of gas, and you just do that before you weld, and then after you're done, you wait a second, so that, uh, or a few seconds, so that it can keep argon shielding on the tungsten electrode, and possibly on your workpiece, and then you turn the valve off. So that's uh, one of the important differences um, between a TIG welder and a stick welder. The other main thing between a very basic TIG welder and a stick welder is the way that the arc is started. Now, if you stick welded, no doubt you know that you have to strike an arc. You can't get an electrical arc started with just the output from the power supply. You actually have to touch it to the workpiece to make a spark. And TIG welding is no different. Now, with dedicated TIG welders, there are two main ways that they start the arc. One, uh, is called high frequency arc starting. And with that, there's a second power supply that puts out a high voltage alternating current frequency um, between the electrode and the workpiece like this. And you can see this arc just starting right away. It's snappy, right? It starts and uh, right there without any touching. And this is a real advantage because you don't wear on your electrode when you start the arc. The other way that TIG welders will do it is called lift arc, and that's where you touch your tungsten electrode down to your workpiece, and there's some circuitry that will sense that, and then when you lift it up, it will start the electricity flowing through and uh, initiate your arc. That works well too. When it comes to using a stick welder to do it, you have to do what's called scratch start. And this is basically striking an arc like you would with your stick welding, but it's much easier than that. Um, you just barely, barely touch it. Right, you barely touch it to the workpiece, otherwise you can kind of gunk up your electrode. Now there is a trick that you can try where you take your filler metal and just flick it, you slide it on your workpiece and flick it across so it touches the side of the electrode. That works too, but uh, if you're starting out, I would just sort of scratch it on there. Then at the end of your weld, there's no way to turn off the electricity, so you have to snap your hand out of there just to make the distance between the electrode and your workpiece too long for the arc to sustain. So you just snap it right out of there, and uh, that's about it. So uh, let's go ahead and set this up, and we'll give it a try and see um, how it goes. I'm going to start off by opening up this torch so you can take a look at the connections on the bottom. Now, most of the torches I have have either a cooling, water cooling line, or the gas hose integrated in with the electrical cable, but in this case, they're separate. And that's really handy so that I can connect this gas hose directly to my uh, gas cylinder and the regulator and the electrical connection to the machine. I'm just running a uh, regular 330 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter lanthanated tungsten. 
Now, normally when you're stick welding, you'll connect your electrode to the positive terminal, but I'm actually gonna hook the torch to the negative terminal here, which is the most common polarity to use when you're TIG welding. It'll be pretty hard to do uh, anything else with this machine. So I'm using 100% argon as the shielding gas here, and I need a regulator flow meter that will uh, control how much gas flows out through the torch. And I'm just using one that I've had around the shop here. And I'll go ahead and tighten down all of the, the connections here. So, so one thing to keep in mind uh, if you're setting up for this to begin with is the gas cylinder may be the most expensive thing that you'll purchase in doing this. So make sure to keep that in mind before you start this endeavor. So I'm going to turn on the cylinder and you can see I'm running pretty low on gas there, but uh, you know, it should be enough for what we're doing here today. And I'll open the valve on my torch and we're flowing a little bit high. So I'm going to turn it down so that we're running right around 15 cubic feet per hour on the flow meter. And, and that looks good. So I'm going to be welding some 1 8 of an inch plate here, uh, which is uh, about 3 or 4 millimeters, and some 1 16 or 1.6 millimeter ER70S6 uh, filler wire. ER70S2 is more common, but I had some of this around, so we're using that today. Now I'm going to set the machine to 130 amps. I know the reading on this isn't exactly right, but we'll just see how it goes um, with that setting, and, and we can change if needed. So I'll go ahead and start off by striking an arc. And you can see we had a fireworks show there. I forgot to turn on the gas flow. So I'll have to clean up my tungsten electrode and we'll try again. This is my little $25 um, tungsten grinder that I made out of an angle grinder and a little diamond wheel in a previous video. And it's, it's really handy just for getting that nice, perfect ground tip on the electrodes. So. I'll install that again and strike an arc, and now we're off and running much better. And you can see I just struck, uh, when I'd strike that arc, I just uh, scratched it very gently on there. And I'm moving along fairly slow here, and that's a function of the setting that I have. So if you want to move faster, you're going to need to turn up and run a little bit more amperage. So let's take a look, and it came out, uh, you know, pretty good for, for just a plain... I weld on a flat piece of plate. Let's take a look here under a little bit darker shade to see how that goes. And you can see I'm able to control the puddle pretty well and have a, a pretty smooth arc for, you know, running a machine that costs, what, just a little over $100. It's pretty crazy. Now, you'll see when I come up to the end here, I'll have to just snap out of it because there's no way to, to turn off. And uh, we'll take a look at the electrode. This is after I've run, you know, seven or eight different uh, beads and started a few times. And there was a little bit of wear there. But uh, now I'm running lap joints. So the bottom, that line, is a plate that's sitting on top of the one in the top of the view. Um, so that uh, I'm welding them together in the way that they're overlapped. And you can see it just melts away a little bit on that top edge as I move along. And that gives me kind of a little uh, peaked and valley um, look as I, I size the weld similar to the, the thickness of the plate. And, and you'll see what I'm talking about there when we look at the finished weld. But here are the results. They came out pretty good. Uh, not perfectly consistent, but uh, overall the machine ran pretty well. I mean, for a, a little just over $100 machine. All right, well, I had a ton of fun setting this little thing up and playing with it on TIG. It ran surprisingly well. Hopefully this helps you if this is something you're thinking about doing. Now, if you are just getting set up to begin with, the cost of the machine plus the torch and the regulator um, everything you need, you're getting close to the cost of buying a dedicated, uh, very basic TIG welder. So you might want to think about uh, shopping for that if you're just getting started. But if you do have a stick welder already and you want to step up and learn uh, a little bit of TIG, this is a good option. Or if you have a welder generator and you want to do some TIG welding with that, also a good option. So check out in the description below. I've linked some videos that will help you learn how to TIG weld as well as a review on this stick welder and another uh, basic TIG welder. So you can take a look at those and kind of compare them to see what would work best for you. And we'll see you next time.